finery and you put on your clothes and you wear your cologne and your perfume and your eau de toilette. But this is the day. Rainy day, cold day, it's the day. Anybody got a praise for God? I know we're here to celebrate our pastor. And she deserves to be celebrated. But is anyone here that is ready to give God a praise for what God has done in your life? And not always the bad things that he brought you out of, but the good things he's walked you into.
God highly it. Wanted to make it right. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All his lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. And come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So enter into his gates of thanksgiving. Hallelujah! Enter into his grace. His holy name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. Sit it right there. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Come on now, church. Were you glad when God said, come on in? Get up on your feet and give the Lord a praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we bless you this morning. God, we thank you this morning. You've been good and you've been kind. As we go to God in prayer with a heart of thanksgiving, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we just came back to say thank you. Thank you for being so good. Thank you for being so kind. As we celebrate this 13th year of pastor and people, God, we say thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. We cry out, Eliezer, hitherto has the Lord brought us. You brought us through the fire. You brought us through, Lord God, being in a basement. God, you kept us, and then you took us to a gym. Then you brought us to this campus. God, you kept us. God, we lost some in the midst, but God, you kept us. We had to cry sometimes, but God, you kept us. We went through some transitions, but God, you kept us. God, you brought us through COVID. God, we want to say thank you. Everyone under the sound of my voice, we need to give God a praise. God has been faithful. God has been kind. And your goodness, your goodness, God, your goodness wrapped us up when we wanted to give up. Your goodness, God, kept us from going off the ledge. Your goodness, God, when the enemy came in like a flood, you lifted up a standard. You lifted up a standard against him. And for this, we give you praise. For this.
same spirit of the divine nine, I want to draw your attention to one who will call the role. The one who is the alpha and the omega. Amen. The one who is the first and the last. The beginning and the end. The author and the finisher of our faith. He will call the role. He will not exclude anyone. He says, bring all the tithes and the offerings to the storehouse. Why? So that there may be provisions in my house. So that's the invitation for all of us. So that there will be provisions in my house. And he goes on and he says, test me. Right? Test me on this and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. You will not have room to receive it. What blessing are you looking for today? The Lord is able, He is mighty, and He will bless us. When our last few days of the all in month, so remember that as you begin to prepare your tithes and offering, the ushers in the back will come and we begin to pass out an envelope if you need one in the sanctuary. There are four ways to give. There, I'm being directed there behind your chairs in a little envelope. You see, we're all in this. <laughs> there are four ways to give. If you're in the house, you may take your envelope once you give your offering to the Lord, you may place it in the white box on your way out. If you're online or if you don't want to go with the envelope, you can go online and follow the prompts that are on the screen. You can text 216-438-26. I can't see the rest of the numbers, but you know where they are. My daughter was here last week from Baltimore, and I'm up there trying to find these numbers, but we got it and she gave. <laughs> you can download my favorite and give through the Givelify. So at this time, we're going to lift up the offering. There is nothing more worrisome to a pastor than the tithes and the offering coming to the house. The pastor never said this to me, but I know pastors, and it takes finances to run a house they come to the church and ask for the bills just like they come to our house so let us lift up God's offering dear Heavenly Father we lift up our offering today we bless you oh dear God for blessing us with a pastor a shepherd who have shepherded this your people for over for 13 years now, oh dear God, as you give to us, let us give back to you generously. And let our offering and our tithes be used for the purpose and the reason that they're being raised. We practice good stewardship and transparency in this house. And we know that there's a great need. So let these tithes and offerings be used to meet those needs. And we will bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
celebrate. He's the ruler of everything. Let's lift his name on high. He's worthy of our praise. He's the Lord God and ancient of days. congratulate you for all of your efforts, your time, your humility, your patience, and your, patience. And your commitment to us. Thank we you. thank you. Thank you. And on behalf of the deacons, 
We have a small tokens, but they're many. <laughs> <laughs> we have three envelopes here from the deacons, which are meant only as an indication of our love for you, our support for you, and our commitment in days to come. God bless. Good morning, South Eubel United Church of Christ. I am here representing the staff of United Way. I'm going to ask at this point that of South Eubel United Church of Christ. If all of the staff would be kind enough to stand right now. We are fortunate enough to see this lady on a regular basis. The very definition of a pastor's heart is typified by Pastor Courtney. To see her on a day-to-day -day basis, how seriously she takes this great responsibility that she has, and all that she does to make sure that the, her flock is taken care of to make sure that this congregation has what it needs. We see it on a day-to-day -day basis, and what we did is put together another small gift here for the pastor. We also have a little something here for Caleb as well. Yeah, so. So at this point in time, we would like to present this to her and say how much we love her, how much we care for her as she cares for us. Thank you. Um, well, children of the youth ministry, please stand up. Um, okay. um, We want to present Pastor with this gift as a token of our appreciation for her and all that she does for us and the whole church. Um, she's she's been here for so long, and um, <laughs> but um, we really we really appreciate her appreciate her and all that she does for us, and um, we just wanted to say thank you. Thank you kindly. I will reserve my comments towards the end, but we thank God for you. I have the awesome privilege of serving with amazing deacons, of working with a phenomenal staff, and even young people like Sincere who first came when they were little ones and to watch them grow up. Let us continue in worship together. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm a pastor, but I slipped on my job today. Amen. Just give me 30 seconds. Amen. Um, I don't have my notes, but I don't need them. I have the awesome privilege of introducing our guest preacher uh, for today, who is none other than the bishop. Amen. Bishop Vashai Murphy McKenzie, we thank God for her. I was um, in my freshman or sophomore year at Spelman College. At, amen. Come on here. Let's. Amen. We're not at homecoming. We're here doing the Lord's work. Amen. Um, but I had the awesome privilege um, of serving at Ray of Hope Christian Church, where my pastor, Reverend Dr. Cynthia Hale, 
Um, Amen uh, was there. So shout out to the AKAs. We, my mother in ministry is an AKA, so we celebrate. Amen. That her daughter chose a different way. But anyway, um, but but I share this in that um, I knew the the call of ministry has been on my life since I was about the age of five. People would ask me, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" I said, "A pastor," but it looks a little boring. This is not a boring job. But I remember sitting there and. The preacher for the, for the morning was Bishop Vashti. And I am someone who has difficulty memorizing scripture, just the way that my brain is wired and my learning style. And Bishop was, had recently been appointed as the first female bishop of the AME Church. Amen. Amen. And many of you know that uh, in the, the church big C tradition, we tend to attach bishop to the first names of people when they've not always completed or gone through the process of election. So this was the first bishop I had ever met who was elected in by her colleagues and to do so as the first female bishop of the AME church, I stood in awe. She preached a sermon that I will not forget. And by the time the sermon was done, I had committed the scripture to memory. Good preaching makes you sit with a text and walk with it when the preacher has exited the pulpit. Amen. And that standard of scripture walking and resonating and living with us and within us has been an intention I have set for my preaching. And so on this, the 13th year, when I thought about who I would love to come, I said, I'm, I'm going to try. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try. And I about fainted in my office when they told me that you were coming. Bishop, everyone here knows your credentials. But the beauty of you is your grace, it is your kindness, it is your exceptional leadership, and it is the way that you have been a reminder for women in my generation that we can keep on walking, we can keep on trusting. And so we thank you for your example, we thank you for the impact you made. I was 18 or 19 years old, but I stand here today with a solid model because the Lord placed you in my life at just the right time. So I thank God for you. Amen. I'm additionally thankful for my Spellman sister. Amen. My Spellman sister, my Sawraw, and a national choir master. Amen. I thank the choir for surviving the national choir master. Amen. <laughs> but I thank you. I thank you for coming. I thank you for your leadership. And I'm so, I'm just blessed that you would come this way on this Sunday when I know that you have other assignments. So thank you. And now let us continue in worship. It is a blessing to be here. But it is a blessing that I would like to teach to my younger musicians to be asked to take part. And this particular song was one that your pastor requested. So we'll do the best to do our best with it. Amen. Would you receive our offering? Receive our offering.
thank you one more glad time that you allow us into the house of prayer and praise. God, we thank you for everything that you've done all week long. In fact, we thank you for what you did this morning that nobody knows anything about. But we thank you for the blessing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. So God, you know what your people need in this moment. You know what needs to be preached and what needs to be said. So I get out of your way that you would have your way today. Do your thing. And we'll give you the credit, the praise, and the honor that is due you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, say amen again. Come on, bless God right now. Bless God. Come on, bless God. It's all right. It's all right. Ah, what a wonderful opportunity to be here in the house of prayer and praise uh, to celebrate this pastor. Amen. Come on, you help me praise God for this pastor. This woman of God. <laughs> we praise God uh, for the pastor, uh, Courtney Jenkins, and for this congregation. Uh, you have done well, my sister. Uh, Y'all know her here, but we know her in other places. She's a preaching woman. She is a preaching woman. And we praise God for her witness as well as her ministry here and the ministry that spreads across the United States to the deacons and officers of the church, to the members of the staff, to the ministerial staff, uh, to the members of this congregation and my sisters in public service. God bless you for your presence. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your love and support. Traveling ain't not always easy. Come on, y'all say amen, Pastor. You understand what I'm talking about, traveling. You wake up and say, it's Tuesday, so I'm in this hotel on Tuesday. I'm on the sixth floor, not the second where I was yesterday. You know, amen. And so uh, when you come, my sisters, uh, it adds a sister love to the process and to the process. And so I know if nobody says amen, they're going to say amen. So they're going to say amen. If there's no other amen in the house, praise God. And so we thank you for your ministry and your service uh, in this particular area. Amen. Where's chapter president? All right, just work with that. Thank you. God bless you. Praise God. And to my brothers and sisters who wear other colors, amen. God bless you for your presence as well. And for everybody who wears the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, there's everybody in the house, there's everybody in the house, there's everybody in the house. Hello, Balcony, how are you? Uh-uh, no, 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 no. That's not Balcony behavior. Hello, Balcony, how are you? Uh, all right, I don't want to have to check on you a little later on. Now. There is a word from the Lord, and it comes from two passages of scriptures this morning. The first from the Old Testament, Joel, the second chapter, verse 28, and I'll lift it in the New International Version. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Young men will see visions. And then Acts, the fourth chapter, verses 16 through 21. When, what are you going to do to these men? They ask, everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have performed a notable sign and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called him in again and commanded them not to speak or to teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him. You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Uh, now, whatever air is blowing, y'all can turn that air down. It's... Can t... hey. Hey. I come from a warmer climate, amen? And... Praise God. Whew. 
which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him. And our theme, thought of meditation this morning is, remember when and remember him. Beloved of God, there are times when what you think you can handle is different from what God thinks you can handle. Can I say that again? There are times when what you think you can handle is different from what God thinks you can handle. So what was prophesied in Joel and unleashed in the Acts of the Apostles reminds us that the Holy Spirit will work through you in spite of what it looks like even when you feel helpless. Beloved, all of us have had helpless moments, moments when action was required but we did not act. Moments where a critical response was needed and no response was given. Moments when a wrong needed to be made right, a failing turned around or a mistake corrected. What was elevated needed to come down. Something needed to be done by somebody and nothing and no one was doing anything at all about it. Well, people, preachers, potentates, prophets, and pastors, all of us have had our helpless moments in life, in mission, and ministry. Moments fueled by isolation because in spite of all the Sunday school lessons, all the Bible study attendance, all the worship and praise, in spite of the textbooks we had to read, the classes we had to take, or any number of degrees or not, every now and then, yeah. we must deal with moments that define classes, curriculum, rhyme, and reason. Molotov moments, ignited by personalities perpetrating drama from the back of the kitchen all the way to the altar rail. Well, did I say to the altar steps? Right? Come on. Man of God, woman of God, we've all had helpless moments fueled by reprehensible behavior of others inside and outside of the household of faith. Come on, y'all say amen. Moments where flesh surrendered and the things of God were held too loosely by those who should have known better. Violent moments, as one author writes, that scrape our faith like chalk screeching across a blackboard. Its marks can be easily washed away, but the sound of evil lingers in the ears of our lives. Moments fueled by an injustice that causes more than one headache but creates a persistent state of victimization for those who live in the shadow of our citadel. Then there's trauma, close order trauma. You know, that close, close order trauma, trauma that you can see, touch, feel, and smell, close order trauma, or vicarious trauma that we share in daily with people far away in Israel or Palestine or Lewiston, Maine. Come on, y'all say amen. And here we are, those who've been called out from among them, challenged by a quagmire of moments that cause catastrophic changes in how we work, how we worship, and witness for the Lord. Well, tell your neighbor, well. Yeah. Understand I'm a talk back preacher, okay? Well, yeah. here we are on Pastor Courtney Jenkins' anniversary Sunday. This is the special moment in both the life of the pastor and the people, a moment where you look back at all of the remember when times. You understand when I say remember when times? The times when you say you remember when we, and you remember when they, you remember when he, yeah, you remember when she, remember when times. You remember what I did? You remember what I said? Uh -huh. You remember what went down? You remember what rose? You remember what fell? You know the remember when times. Remember when I asked, remember when I inquired, remember when I loved, remember when I, remember when we cried together, remember when times. This is the day where we take a journey from remember when to the way forward. We go from remember when to what is us is going to do now. From remember when to pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. From remember when to moving the unmovable, breaking the unbreakable. We believe God for it, future in realities that often make us feel helpless. It's a remember when to remember him Sunday. Pastor Courtney, 
we find ourselves in a place where we're now constantly praying for people who no longer want us to keep them in their thoughts and prayers because they want more than thoughts and prayers. We find ourselves in places where we have to preach through our own stuff, to preach to the stuff where the people live and how they live and what they must face in uncertain seasons. We have the right messenger. His name is Jesus. Uh -huh. We have the right message. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're hauling water to the desert places where there are conditions beyond human control. As we journey through the third year of the second decade in the 21st century, there are just too many circumstances that have been ignited by trauma. Some are personal and some are in the congregation. Some are in our own household, some is in the ministry. Some is down the street and around the corner. Some is in our own neighborhood. Some is in somebody else's family and some stuff is in our own family. Our own clique, our own crowd, our own club. And what's going on around us offends our sense of humanity, offends our sense of compassion, offends blind justice who already can't see. Am I right about it? Say amen. She already can't hear what we hear, and her heart has been hardened by a predatory culture that I believe even offends God. We've all had those moments of helplessness that cancels our ableness. We all have ableness. We are teach able. You get it now? We are learn able. We are love. We are account, we are adapt, we are break, we are favor, we are fashion, we are heal, we are honor, we are predict, we are respect, we are vi. And stuff happens that negates all of our positive ables so that we have developed a sense of unableness, the sense of being unable to act and unable to stop the madness and unable to abate the abuse, unable to compre comprehend how to provoke one another to love in an angry world. A flame with an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth theology and means of settling disputes, unable to correct public craziness, unable to avoid public craziness, unable to avoid digital massacres or the craziness in congregation. It happens, it happens. Craziness in the community of believers, it happens, it happens. Correct the corrosive nature of corruption or change the course of divisive leadership anytime, anywhere, in any place. Y'all still in the room? We've all had helpless moments, whether we're standing by the graveside of a loved one or the hospital bed of a friend, wrestling with our own internal trauma or global atrocities. People feel empowered to hate publicly. I've never seen it on this wise before. And I wasn't born yesterday in case you haven't figured that out yet. <sighs> Venom is unleashed and physical venom in home and school, at the pools, in the park, after dark, on the sidewalk, at the picnic place, in the parking lot, at nightclubs and synagogues and churches and bowling alleys and Bible study. We are witnessing no less than the manipulated process of the institutional hijacking of our sanity. And for what reason? For personal gain, exceptionalism, extremism, and self-interest. Every now and then, one of these helpless moments slips in and shows up. And we begin to pray like David, oh Lord, how long, Lord, oh how long? 
Or we stand still like Moses and, to see the salvation of the Lord. Or we look in our closet for the whole armor of God, as Paul suggests, to go into battle with the captain of the Lord's army. We rightly divide the word of truth, writing what the Spirit says right, Pastor, even in the isolation of our own personal items. We preach wherever we can on the hillside, in the plain, in the boat, like Jesus, interpreting God's word unnoticed, underappreciated, like Holder. We run to tell others to come and see a man who told me everything about ourselves like the woman at the well. Or we go see the king like Esther because our ordination doesn't exempt us from serial global atrocity. For who knows, my brothers and sisters, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your nieces and your nephews shall prophesy. Your aunts and your uncles shall prophesy. Your mama and your daddy shall prophesy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows that you are called for such a time as this. Tell your neighbor, wait now. Beloved, feeling helpless is one thing. Being helpless is another. As humans, we are emotional beings and the Bible is replete with numerous incidents of feelings expressed. Jesus wept, Miriam, Sang, David danced, Moses got angry. And as humans, we do have legitimate feelings and experiences. And sometimes they're not always accurate to reality. Ergo, feeling helpless doesn't necessarily mean that we are without resources or assistance. This is where you say, what you say? Hagar in the Bible felt helpless. She thought she was without resources when she and Ishmael got kicked out of the house. She put the boy under the tree and waited to die. And God comes along and says, open your eyes. And when she did, she found out that her help was right there in front of us. She felt helpless, but she was not without resources. The prophet Elijah, exhausted and tired and discouraged, is sent to a brook where God provides sustenance. He felt helpless, but the ravens brought him resources. Nothing compares to God's great power towards us who believe. That's Bible. And this power of God working on our behalf is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead and seated him in heavenly places. We got resources. Tell your neighbor, we got resources. No, y'all don't believe me. We got resources. What do you mean? Jesus didn't die to keep us safe from hurt, harm, and danger. Jesus died to make us dangerous. And so the question is, how dangerous are you? You can bind and loose. Yes, we can. We can declare and decree. Yes, we can. We can plead the blood. Yes, we can. We can cast out devils. Yes, we can. When someone is sick, we can send the elders to pray. Yes, we can. How dangerous. Every morning from your knees, you have the power of prayer in your spiritual arsenal to shake up hell, storm the gates of hell, send hell back to hell, scare the living hell out of hell, and that's from your knees. And when you get off your knees, life and death is in your mouth, so speak life. I shall live and not die. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm a lender, not the power be. God has given you the ability to produce wealth. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's Bible. And that's after you get off your knees. Remember, you can engage in life-transforming, character-correcting, resource-identifying to co-create and create with Christ in ministry that breaks up the darkness of this world and ushers people into his marvelous light. We got resources. As believers, we have the authority to go into all the world, to make disciples, to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach the commands of the Lord. That's after you get off your knees. Remember, 
You can stand up against evil and walk among your enemies and not be touched and find the right words and make the right decision and be assured of your salvation. Now, convicted when you turn from the right or the left and comforted all at the same time, only by the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, there's power outside yourself working within you and through you when even you feel helpless. Uh, remember, you can be sanctified without feeling frustrated or lonely or distant from God uh, because there is a power that intervenes in our lives and changes the li our lives forever. Remember, you will need to be filled with the Holy Spirit to speak truth to power when your life is in danger, just like Peter in our text. Remember this Holy Spirit power is a part of God's DNI program. Diversity and inclusion. For I will pour out my spirit upon and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So says the word of God. Now can I exegete the text? Thank you. Extraordinary things were happening after the day of Pentecost had fully come. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak and the Spirit gave them utterance. And the Lord added to the church as such would be saved. By the time we get to Acts, the fourth chapter, our text, about 5,000 had joined the church. They were a close knit community. The word of God says they met daily and they shared among themselves. They had all things in common. They gave to the people in need, devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles. They prayed, they praised God and enjoyed the favor of all people. And then, and then, Peter preached a second sermon. Is there? Uh, he had a three word title, look on us. And his sermon was one sentence long. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Three words, one sentence. And a beggar man, lame from birth, rises from his circumstances to stand up in his destiny. Pastor Jenkins, isn't it wonderful when God's spirit opens our mouths to break through someone's condition that they can find their life and destiny in Jesus Christ? One whose future was dim, one who could not fend for himself, one who could not take care of himself, incapacitated in so many ways, got up from where he was and stood in the destiny that God had for him. That's Peter's second sermon. Three word title, one sentence long. Peter now keeps preaching and it greatly disturbs the religious establishment. Turf protecting kicks in. You know how we are when looks like somebody's encroaching upon our turf. Looks like they're intruding upon our territory. Trying to limit the power we think we have. Gonna, gonna come in here, gonna try and take over. I've been here for 40 years and now here they come. Like, like church didn't start until they arrived. And church ain't going to be the same when they're gone. You know how it is when turf protecting kicks in. <laughs> New soloist shows up. Wants to sing the song you've been singing. Come on, Natalie. That's real. That's real. That's real. Young whippersnappers come on up in here then. Because you know the church is the only place where you can be young until you're 50. <laughs> yeah, 
What's the ministry that you participate? Oh, I'm in the young adult club. Oh, where does that? From 18 to 49. <laughs> young adult ministry. Turf protecting kicks in. As the temple leaders considered the temple to be their turf, they considered that they were the ones, only ones authorized to handle what is holy. They're the only ones to handle healing. It's in their resume, in their job description. They're the only ones who are the conduits of the mercies of God. Yet in the text now, it wasn't the temple leaders that were wielding the power of God. Uh -huh. Nor was the recipient unapproved or acceptable and was not church material. Stop. Aren't you glad that the blessings you get from God is not determined by human approval or acceptability? I mean, somebody should have jumped up and started running through the church. Aren't you glad that the church don't have to sit on whether you get your blessing or not? Whether you get saved or not, whether you get promoted or not. Because the truth be told, if somebody sat in on all of us, none of us would be in here right now. I'm sorry, sit down. I have to come back and be, come back. To Every now I just step out and speak, you know, just. Where was I? Oh, yet it wasn't, the, it wasn't the temple keepers that demonstrated the power, nor was the recipient approved and acceptable. They weren't church material. The Sadducees denied life after death. And here comes Peter with his preaching cell. Now understand that when he preached the first sermon, 3,000, or was it 2,000? A whole bunch of people. got saved and they heard the word in their own language. I remember that part. You remember that part? And Peter preaches not once now, but twice. And he was preaching in the name of Jesus. Remember, Sadducees denied life after death. Here come preacher Peter with his preaching himself that Jesus was crucified and risen from the grave. God's not dead. He's yet alive. Trampling all over their belief system. How dare he do such a thing? Who is Peter? Where did he come from? He's unlearned, ain't got no degree, he's out of line, he's unacceptable, he's not trained in the rabbinical process. This is a jack leg preacher up on our turf. Who let him in? But no matter the criticism of the messenger, many believe the messenger because Preta Peter preach with receipts. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Peter didn't preach about the theory of Jesus raised from the grave. Peter was an eyewitness. He saw Jesus call Lazarus from death to life, and he touched the casket of the widow of Nain's son, and the boy set up alive. He preached with receipts. He heard what Jesus said, what was going to happen, that he would suffer, die, and rise on the third day, and he did. And not only that, he rose with all power in his hand. Peter had receipts. I've seen Jesus handle difficult situations. He handled sin, death, and hell. <laughs> Peter had receipts. He'd seen Jesus alive with his own eyes. They had gone to fish and the fishing place and caught fish together. They ate fish together. Receipts. He didn't just suggest that there is healing in the power of the name of Jesus. Peter used his name and then here is exhibit A, the evidence this man got up from his pain in the name of Jesus praising God. It's one thing to preach what you think can happen, what you think ought to happen, what should happen. It's another thing to preach that this is what happened, and I got the evidence. Makes me want to holler right here, because this is not just for the past in me. This 
is for you and me. Remember, this is Remember Sunday, right? Remember, I know Jesus to be a deliverer because he delivered me. I know Jesus is a healer. Come on, baby, because Jesus healed me. I know Jesus can save because Jesus saved me. I know Jesus to be a keeper because Jesus... Slap somebody, say, I got receipts. I got receipts. Slap them again. I got receipts. I've been to hell and back. You should have seen me before grace got me. I got receipts. <laughs> Woo! This is Remember Sunday. You need to tell somebody uh, your testimony. Uh, I prayed uh, in the name of Jesus uh, and he answered my prayer. Uh, I called on his name uh, in my time of trouble uh, and he came to help me. Uh, oh, glory to God. Uh, you ought to talk it like your grandmama talking. Uh, he's a burden bearer, uh, a load fixer, uh, a heart fixer, uh, a mind regulator. Uh, I got receipts. Wait, 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 wait. Not only do I have receipts, but I am a receipt. You don't know my story. You just see my glory. You see, you see, half the time, half the time, we think what we got was a mistake. But sometimes what happened to us got us in position to get what God had for us all along to get us in position and in place. They call it a plan B. Plan B. Hello to all of the plan Bs in the room. They didn't think you want to graduate, but you graduated anyhow. They didn't think you were gonna live after that mess, but you kept on living anyhow. The doctors gave up on you, but healing snuck in the room in the midnight hour. Baby, they didn't think you were gonna make it. You were going down for the last time, but God called your name and up you came. Hey, plan B, you want on nobody's mind but God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me come back to the exegesis. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, preaching, preaching with evidence. He's also pointing to Jesus. Peter preaches, know this, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that this man stands before you healed. He points to Jesus. Wait now, he's not trying to make Jesus fit 
his point. Jesus is the point. And so there's, there's Holy Spirit preaching that connects what happens in the lives of people with what has happened in, in the cultural landscape to the gospel truth so that it is seen and visible and made alive. Uh, uh, Diedrich Bonhoeffer writes, I got to show up in the, I've, I've been through seminary, just one, just one sentence in the text. You know, Bonhoeffer writes that the time when people could be told everything by means of words, whether theological or pious, is over. Surely we know that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But the reference is to the word that is alive. That when the gospel is preached, not only do you hear it, but you see it and you can smell it and you can feel it and you can touch it. That means that when we exegete the text, uh, we're exegeting the house at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so that the heroes are not spectators. Well, I'm talking to the back. I'm talking to the balcony right now. You're not spectators, but you're participants uh, in what is happening in the room. Uh, you So that the heroes uh, are, are now uh, uh, not connected to a solitary performance, uh -huh, but become participants and partners uh, in the exegete and the exposition uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, to the manifestation of what is said, proclaimed, spoken, and preached. Uh, that means us uh, we are partners uh, we are participants uh, uh, that we can hear uh, what God is up to uh, in the word and the world together uh, and not miss a move of God uh, like the Sanhedrin miss uh, the move of God those who have ears let them hear what the spirit says to the church uh, it's this kind of preaching uh, that gets you into trouble uh, uh, because it goes for the juggler uh, it goes below the surface of where we really live uh, it lies uh, where it dispels the lies that we tell ourselves on a regular basis. Uh, I'm all right. No, you ain't. I'm doing fine. No, you're not. Uh, it goes deep. Uh, this Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit filled preaching, it burns. Uh, it penetrates. Uh, it steps on our toes. Uh, it irritates us because uh, it's all up in your Kool-Aid. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It goes deep. It pushes us out of our comfort zone. It changes, convince, and if I, and when it's preached, it spreads like wildfire uh, to change those around us and changes in the church. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, reveals the truth of Jesus Christ in all of his beauty and invites us to the table to follow where he will take us into our uncharted territory. This is where I break out in song. I understand I cannot sing, but this is where I break out in song. My husband will always tell me when I stand up, he said, baby, don't sing on the mic. Don't sing. Start the song. Don't sing it. Start it. I said, this is where I break out. I said, lead me, God. That's old school. Lead me. Guide me along the way. Oh, thank God for some old school for her. Lord, if you lead me. Oh, let me walk. Lead me and guide me along the way. New school is in the house too. If he did it before, he can do it again. If he did it before, he can do it again. If he did it before, he can do it again. Understand both works, both works, both works. Peter and John were apprehended. They were arrested and placed in the custody without access to an attorney. The arraignment was the next day. It's in the text. Go back and read it for yourself. They were questioned about authority. By what authority or power were the people taught and the man healed? Now, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, spoke truth to power. Imagine with me in your sanctified imagination how hard that was for Peter to do this. He's standing in front of the same Sanhedrin that put Jesus on death row. 
He, he's standing right there, unarmed, yeah, unprotected. The same crowd that had manipulated the Roman government. He's right there. He's standing in front of the folk that had plotted and planned and planned and plotted and plotted and planned to set Jesus up on trumped up charges, no pun intended, wrongfully accused and unfair sentenced. This is the same crowd. Who could do the same to them? But Peter had a hookup, and the hookup was the Holy Spirit. And filled with the Holy Spirit, he spoke to the situation. Not correct English, but appropriate for the moment. Remember now, this is Remember When Sunday, right? Remember now, you cannot do these things uh -huh, on your own in the flesh. For no matter how many degrees you have, how high your IQ, your EQ, and your SQ, if you don't know what I just said, ask the children. How your heritage, your history, your courageous risk-taking proclivity, you will not be able to do greater works in the flesh. Jesus promised that as believers we will do the works he's been doing and we'll do it even greater things. And we can never do what the Spirit can do and no amount of human talent and exertion of energy will ever grow, uh, will ever, uh, grow the spiritual kingdom of Christ. And so on this Remember When and Remember Him Sunday, we need to go back to deepening, uh, how to depending on the Spirit's fire, uh, which not only quickens and penetrates, but also illuminates our path. Remember there are things, there are times when what you think you can handle is different from what God thinks you can handle. And the Holy Spirit will work through you in spite of what it looks like, even if you feel helpless. So in the midst of this moment of remember when Sunday, when we, when we, when we journey, remember, take what you learned at one level to the next level. You got it? The future always calls us to do what we've never done before. Peter learned how to pray for one hour in the garden. But remember, when he got to the jail, he was able now to hold a midnight prayer and praise service. And the dungeon shook and the chains fell off. You remember when? Uh-huh. When Peter cut off the soldier's ear in the garden, uh -huh. now he stands before the Sanhedrin and he's learned how to temper his tongue uh, to address boldly the enemies before him. Remember when uh, Peter denied Christ three times before the cock crowed? Uh, he now says that the man was healed uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, remember when uh, Peter went back to doing what he was doing before he met Jesus after the crucifixion? Uh, he's now preaching and thousands are being saved. Uh, baby, take what you learn at one level uh, and take it to the future with you. Uh, come on, take that follow through Jesus with you. Uh, it's time to go to the next level, Pastor. <laughs> Take that genius with you. It's time to go to the next level, Pastor. You learn how to defuse an argument. Take it now to the next level. You've learned how to rally the troops. Take it to the next level. You mastered execution and design. Take it to the next level. Hold people accountable. Take it to the next level. Survive the crises. Take that knowledge to the next level. That experience helped you to do what you've never done before. When you feel helpless, you can sing. If he did it before he can do it again if he did it before he can do it again now, you've learned uh, that the holy spirit gives you power uh, to live right to act right and to do right uh, power to pray uh, when you don't know what to pray uh, through the power of the spirit uh, you can put to death the deeds of our sinful nature uh, come on let us keep the holy spirit fire burning uh, let the spirit have his way in the church uh, we must be ready and prepared uh, to confront the enemies of our soul and the kingdom uh, we must be listening uh, to hear what the Spirit has to say. Uh, just like John, uh, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Uh, and write uh, what the Spirit says right. Uh, be open uh, to what God has to say. Uh, Peter's yes put him in a difficult spot uh, to do the difficult. Uh, uh, he may have thought to himself uh, that he can't handle it. Uh, but the Spirit led him to handle a difficult message uh, in a difficult spot uh, with difficult people uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. It looked helpless and hopeless, but he stood in the heat of the day. How so? Because the Holy Spirit will show up in such a way that even your enemies will see the God in you. 
Go on down to verse 21. Uh, how after they had tried to threaten them, uh, they let them go. Uh, there was nothing they could do. Uh, even the enemies uh, could see the favor of God uh, in them standing. Uh, the enemy will always try, uh, but to live in such a way uh, that even your enemies uh, can see God in you. Uh, they may not like you. Uh, uh, they'll never like you. Uh, so stop wasting your time uh, to get approval and acceptance from you. Uh, they may never invite you. Uh, may never include you. Uh, you're not on the A-list. Uh, you're not getting an invitation. Uh, don't matter. Uh, God loves you uh, and approves you uh, and saves you uh, and gives you the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember that there is something greater in you. But greater is he that is in you and he that's in the world. Remember our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above. Remember you'll close the door to the past and open the door to the future. Take a deep breath and walk in your destiny. Promise me. Promise me. When I say promise me, say I promise. Shall we practice? Promise me. Promise me. Promise me. Promise me. Come on, balcony. Promise me. Promise me. You'll always remember that you are worth loving no matter what. Promise me. You'll stop allowing people and things uh, that are long gone uh, to dominate your thought, uh, dictate your prayer life, and waste your time. Promise me. You'll allow the Lord to do something wonderful uh, through you this week uh, that your future self will look back and say, thank you. Promise me. You'll take care of yourself. Uh, promise me. You'll dream big, really big. Uh, promise me. You'll stop worrying about what's going to go wrong. Uh, but stop thanking God for what can go right. Promise me. You'll admit that it was hurt. Uh, that it hurt. It was wrong. You bled. Uh, now pick up your sword and shield and let it go. Promise me. You'll get a good night's sleep tonight. Promise me. You'll do what's best for you today. Promise me. You'll surround yourself with people who bring you joy, bring you laughter, and you'll walk away from every mean spirit of person that comes in your life. In fact, stand and say bye-bye. Practice right now. Bye-bye. 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 Promise me. That you won't spend too much time on people who won't do. And start spending time on people who do. This is remember when, but also remember him. And when you remember him, then live in the power of the Holy Spirit. So your testimony will be the same as Peter. I cannot but help to speak what I have seen and heard. This is the Lord's doing, and we are glad. Come on, holler for Jesus Christ. Come on now. If God has blessed you, if the Lord has helped you, if the Lord has lifted you, you ought to act like it. Come on, you got receipts now. God, I thank you. God, I bless you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I give you praise. Oh, Lord. Thank you. Come on, come on. Thank you, God. Thank you for your goodness. 
Thank you, Jesus. What a word from God. Come on, let's celebrate God on this morning. God sent a word. Is there a word from the Lord? Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank God for the word that he gave Bishop Vashti McKinley Murphy. She gave us scripture that remind us that the God we serve is faithful. She began in Joel, God said he would do. And through millenniums, he brought it to pass in the book of Acts. And we just came to remind you that he is a God of promise. And what he said he will do, he will do. And if you're here and you have not yet received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we invite you to do so. Those of you that are watching online, if you say today is the day, that I'll allow God, through the Spirit of God, to release me from my past and to unleash me unto my future. You're invited. The preacher said, we are receipts because we can say, you just don't know where the Lord has brought me from. The old folks used to say, he brought me from a long way off, but God has been faithful. So if you're here, we welcome you. If you're online, we welcome you. If you're here in the sanctuary, I'm going to ask Deacon Deidre to please stand. Please see this deacon right here. If you would like to give God your heart and give South Euclid your hand, we welcome you. Let us say this prayer together. Faithful and mighty God, for too long, I've kept you out of my life. I know that I am a sinner and that I need you in my life. No longer will I close the door when I hear you knocking. By faith, I gratefully receive your gift of salvation. I am ready, you and Lord and Savior. I believe you are the Son of God who died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead on the third day. Come into my heart and live in me. In Jesus' name, amen. On the screen, you will see ways to say yes to God by digital connection and the S-E-U-C-C churchcenter.org. Those of you that are online and those of you in the sanctuary, we're a very forward-thinking church. You might be here and might not be ready to give the Lord or to come forth or to meet Deacon Deidre, but you can just call and come join us in, in classes and begin to learn the way of God because God is a God who cares. He's the God, as we say here, he will walk with you. Why? because nothing beats a long walk with God. God bless you. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Give me a holy word. If I can hear from you, I'll know what to do. I won't go. Come on. And what? Come on. Come on, just let. Can we just do it one good time for me? Come on. We want to take a moment. First of all, can you help me give God thanks and praise for our preacher this morning? Come on, you can do better than that. God sent a messenger. 
to arrest us all. And for that, we thank God and we thank you, Bishop. And we promise, amen, we promise to do our part, amen, in this work and in this partnership. Just want to take a brief moment, uh, just a few moments. We'll have you out of here in just a few minutes. I want to take a moment to thank my mother. Mom, would you stand? The first Delta I knew. Mom, stand. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Diane. Amen. We thank God for my mother. Amen. You know, she brags on us kids in private. Amen. But when we acknowledge her, she wants to do her own thing. I thank God for my son, Caleb, who's around here somewhere. Um, and so we thank God for Caleb. Amen. Amen. I love you very much, and I'm thankful for you. Um, my family makes its own sacrifices so that we can do this work together. And I never take it lightly the ways in which I have a last minute meeting and my mom will help out or amen, <laughs> amen. Um, or uh, Caleb has a desire and I wanna be a mom before I wanna be a pastor. And he reminds me of my priorities, amen. And I thank God for him. I thank God for the staff. I work with an amazing team of people, amen. Thank God for them, for all the staff of South Euclid. I'm um, in the ways that they continue to bless. I really want to thank our deacons because, amen. Interesting history fact, as you talk about remember, when I arrived at South Euclid, they had done away with deacons. Um, there were no deacons, there were no trustees. They saw it as a power hungry model that was not serving the heartbeat of the church. And so I asked the question on the Sunday, I drank grape pop from the cup. We're going to have to get us some deacons, amen? <laughs> amen. But I want to thank God because these deacons in particular help me shoulder this flock in a way by visiting, calling, checking. They take you all to your appointments. Come on here, we really are. And I prefer actually over the word church because there's so much hurt associated with it. We're striving here to be a sacred community of believers of Jesus Christ where we understand while I might be the pastor, it doesn't rest on me. It's a community effort. And so I just wanna honor our deacons on this day, amen, for the ways that they continue to serve. We have various leaders throughout the church who continue to serve. I want to thank this corner. It's my tribe. Amen. So I thank God for all the people in my tribe and the way that they not only let me be pastor and respect that, but they also let me be Courtney. I want to specifically ask my pop pop uh, to stand. Would you stand pop real quick? Y'all know Reverend Carl Wallace. Amen. I thank God for you, Pop Pop, and the way that you just continue to walk with us. And you're always checking on me. And on the days when I don't know what to do in ministry, I'll be like, let me just call Pop real quick. And you give me wisdom, you give me counsel, and you always remind me God's got it and to do it in love. And that is how we continue to serve in this house. So I thank God for you. Certainly want to acknowledge Avis for her outstanding gifts. Thank you, sis. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We bless God for you. And to all the Deltas in the house, amen. We thank God for you, amen. I know we have regional officers, local folks who are here and leaders. And I know that on this busy weekend with our cluster, I know that it was a lot to get here, but I think worship is a beautiful way for us to end the cluster, amen. Reminding the pro reminded of the promises um, that we make together. Thank God in particular for my line, 70 Degrees, who continues to show up on this day. I remain so thankful for each and every one of you. I wanna just simply share this in closing. All of you know I live by this motto. Nothing compares to a long walk with God. What I reflected on today is that I never thought I'd be here after 10 years. Just an assumption. Um, but in year 10, the pandemic hit. And what I thought God was going to do didn't unfold. But I'm so thankful for plan B. And I'm thankful for the ways in which God has kept me 
if I can have a moment of vulnerability and transparency with you, the last five years I have spent crying in my office about why am I still here. This is the first time in a long time that I am so grateful that I'm still here, and it's by the grace of God. So I thank God for the long walk. I thank God because I tell my congregation every Sunday, nothing will be wasted. And although each of us are on our own long walk with God, I would not want to journey with any other group of people than what used to be Euclid Avenue Congregational Church and today rises as South Euclid United Church of Christ. We are in this together. We are a family. And I know that we will continue to grow and as Pastor William Watley would say in, from the Bible, in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to do one final note, which is it's Kim Adams' birthday. So we ought to recognize an AKA on this day. She wore her pink and green. Amen. Because we believe all God. I love how all the AKAs, came. folks we didn't even know was AKAs came out in their pink and green today. Amen. 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 Come on and pop up, y'all. All are welcome in the house of the Lord. But I just want to, for a moment, I want to lift up Kim because it's her birthday, because Kim is someone who comes a very far way to come to church. She drives forever, it feels like, to get here. But she is someone who has come consistently, has not only served, but has taken all that we have offered and put it to work in her life. And I've watched your life change over the course of being here. And on this, your birthday, I pray that God would continue to bless you, and that you would never be afraid to do the work that bears the fruit that makes the, the walk well worth it. Amen? Amen. Those are my comments for now. I'm full, I'm full, I'm full, I'm full, and I'm grateful. So I know I stand between you and brunch. We do have a treat for you because I'm the pastor who gives out gifts on her anniversary because I just, I'm so grateful. Um, and so I'm going to ask if Bishop would join me here. We will exit out. Reverend Gina, I believe, will come and offer our benediction. She and I will greet you in our atrium. Um, but if you would, please stand as our executive pastor, Reverend Gina Moore, comes forth and offers us our blessed benediction. Thank you, Reverend Gina. Amen. For those of you that are in the sanctuary and those of you that are in the balcony, we do have our offering boxes in the back. So as you come down um, from the balcony and as you exit, there are two right here in the center and there are also at the exiting doors to my left, your right, and to my right, your left. Amen. Or it could have been the other way around. Amen. Those of you that are members, please be mindful of this coming Saturday, we have prayer in the sanctuary. We call it Saturday in the sanctuary at nine o'clock. At 10 o'clock, we will be walking the grounds and covering the grounds in prayer. And then at 1015, we will be having teacher talk. Those of you that are teachers, facilitators, would like to be teachers or facilitators from 1015 to 1130. Please go to the website to register so that we can make sure that we provide you with a, you know, a, a nice little snack in between. Amen. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, now let it rest, now let it rule, and now let it abide till we meet again. Shalom. Amen.